I have rules of season 14 that I've come up with, concocted, and or sent. Uh, number one would be comms. Now more than ever this season of Apex Legends, it's very important to communicate with your teammates. The player typically commands the team. If you're three stacking, you know, usually you want to pick up, say, like a coach or something, you know. Obviously, you know, you have to pick somebody that in the team that you usually play with. If you're usually three stacking with a team that you've played with before, pick the person that usually comes out on top with your team. Uh, that is very important. Now for another thing, if you're two stacking, make sure you're including your random third in comps. It's very important that all teammates are in the loop, so to speak, because it's very important to get distracted and you want to make sure that everybody is on the same page, making sure that everyone's on information on a go-to basis. Usually if you're going to, say, attack another party, you want to tell this to them. And I know it seems very obvious to some people, but a lot of people don't even bother comping with their third. It's very important because if you want to win more games, information is key to every single win or fight in general. Uh, just making sure that everyone understands that, hey, listen, I'm going in for this guy, I'm throwing nades, blah, blah, blah. Do what you got to do. You, you say what you're going to do. Act on it. and Make sure your third teammate knows. That's about it for number two on that list. Now, however, we're going to the opposite spectrum of this. Uh, if you're solo queuing, very important. You guys want to listen up if you're trying to solo queue. If you're solo queuing, it's always better to communicate, even if the other teammates aren't talking. Like, probably like around seven times out of ten, maybe even eight. I don't really have any actual real statistics, but that's just kind of what I've been playing as of recently. Uh, unfortunately, most teammates usually won't come, but they will at least listen. So if you want to make sure that you can hear uh, footsteps or anything, any callouts regarding inf any information at all, tell your teammates. If you hear anything, they will most likely act on it seven times out of ten. Sure, sometimes you have the oddball where they just mute you in the beginning, but you know what? That's a risk you're willing to take if you're solo queuing, and that's kind of what you have to do. Uh, it is unfortunate, but it's one of those things that you have to work around in your own way. Uh, communicating, I usually find it's best to start right away talking. Obviously not mic spamming, but you want to get to know your teammates as soon as possible. Saying hello, greetings, hello, how you doing, etc, etc. Getting on their good side, essentially. It's unfortunate, but that's what you have to do. Number two on this topic of ranked, five, uh, ranked 14 season. Uh, landing lo locations and rotations. So if you're like me currently, I'm a plat one slash diamond. I'm almost a diamond. That's why I'm including that. Uh, you want to land elsewhere. Usually that isn't, you know, super contested. Uh, usually it's better to loot up uh, and then rotate into a fight that's already happening. Usually I would do that around maybe say cage or uh, the recon scanner place. I forget the name and caustic's hideout. I also forget the name of that specifically. Should have done my research. But anyway, essentially all you want to do at that point is you want to contest areas that can guarantee a fight win scenario and if you feel like you can guarantee that fight win scenario from via third party you should always take it always 100 percent take it it doesn't matter what you're in right now what rank you are always make sure that you are contesting with your full team if the full if the team isn't on board don't go in it doesn't make any sense to rotate and go into that fight if you're all alone however another thing is for that topic uh, if you are being contested, remember the three rules. Loot, fight, first, and leave. Currently, the season favors those who are brave and the bold. Essentially, what that means is you want to contest your enemy as soon as possible after looting on a hot drop location or anywhere in general. Uh, you want to loot up first, make sure you have everything. Um, usually, what I will do is I will play SMG with a shotgun of some kind early on, and then and then usually I'll switch out or something like that. This is this is kind of what usually works for me personally, but if you have a playstyle that you prefer, always play with that playstyle that you are more confident with. Uh, but you should always, by now, you should be confident in the game that you're playing, because if, if you're plat or even, like, honestly gold, you should know a lot of the guns and how they work. Uh, but that's essentially how that works, essentially. I know I'm saying essentially a lot, but there you go. <laughs> but yeah, so areas like Cage and Relic are really good for that type of fight, because... You have a lot of indoor areas. You want to play to those strengths. You want to make sure that like they're coming to you or you're coming to them out in the open. You want to get them outside as much as possible while you have the high ground, say, on like a couple of buildings in Relic. That's what you need to do. That's how you win most fights in that scenario. So Legends is the third topic we have for you today. So first of all, when I say this Legends, you know, in quotes, blah, blah, blah. The new legend for the season 14 is rather interesting. The new legend Vantage early game is really good. Uh, usually around like 10 to 12 play teams, usually Vantage becomes less good at that time because half the teams are already gone. You have purple armor at that point, usually around there. And it's just in general, not a very good legend to use your ult with. 
Uh, but for early games, if you want to get almost not quite guaranteed, but if you want to have a, a, a little bit of a stronger edge, her ult is a really good early game. Uh, however, if you really want to play for late game and you want to make sure that you're getting like at least hundreds and hundreds of RP, I would personally recommend these legends are as follows. Valkyrie, Seer, Bloodhound is, you know, like you usually want to have one to two uh, recons in the season, I've noticed. One is perfectly fine, though. You don't need a whole lot. Uh, if you're going with one, though, Valkyrie, I feel like is a must have still. Her ult is still pretty nice and Seer is also pretty good. Um, my current comp is basically... Valkyrie, Seer, and Wraith, but that's because I'm I'm only good as a Wraith usually. I, I play other legends too, and I can do pretty well with Gibby and all that. But I don't know. Something about Wraiths and her portal to kidnap players is just really fun for me. But anyway. Um But to say if you don't have a recon, what do you do? If you genuinely don't have a recon on the team, it's not the end of the world. You usually just want to really listen for footsteps, other enemy teams. Just really be on high alert. You know, again, it's not the end of the world, but you do have to can uh, comfort your team and make sure that everyone is ready to go contest open areas uh, like from a building say but otherwise that's really all you can do at that point um but yeah i would say my current tier list i would have to say for ranking on season 14 or stated earlier valkyrie would be number one still sears definitely a close number two watson i feel is pretty strong this season as well especially with all the buildings and like middle areas uh newcastle Super important. That mobility respawn is super insane with the shield. Amazing. Gibby's pretty good. Still, I wouldn't say he's the best, but he's definitely up there still. Uh, I'd say around maybe top five or six. Wraith or Horizon? Super good legends right now. Uh, I, I feel that Horizon's a little bit better, but Wraith's Q to get out of tough situations definitely helps too. I've, I've won a couple 1v3s even one or even 1v2s just making sure that my team is, you know, right behind me when I'm queuing in. But like, say if I have, if I have to kidnap somebody, you usually want to press your ult and then say, you know, queue uh, maybe a few seconds later and kidnap another teammate. But that's a topic for another video. Anyway, that's my ranking list. If you missed it, you can rewind and there you go. Number four on this topic is end game plays. So if you have a Watson or a stationary object character, say like Caustic, it's always important to make sure that you want to play to your strengths, not your weaknesses, obviously. So if you have a Watson or a Caustic or anyone of that sort, always play in buildings at the very end of the game. It's kind of like, it's a little boring, I can get that, but it's always important if you really want to rank up the season, if you want to get a lot of RP and KP, Watson, Caustic, or any of those characters are super good um, for, for end game plays. The only reason why I didn't include Caustic on the last tier, uh, last topic tier list, is duly, just purely because he just doesn't isn't good very early game. He's good in general, um, and, but Watson is just a bit better, I feel like. Um, but anyway, you want to play it safe, never play recklessly, in short. And another couple things, I'm going to combine these last two topics of stage four here. So essentially, if you have, you know, if you're in the late game, which you should be if you're playing this guide, um, always, you know, carry at least a one or two, three nades in your backpack. Like, I personally would carry one nade if I had a gray backpack, uh, two nades in blue, and three if you have purple. That's how I would do that. Um, that usually wins me a good few of the games that I'm fighting in. Uh, usually you want to use those nades if you're like the last top three teams, even top four even. Um, you want to use those nades. You always want to use them consistently, but you want to make sure that you're using them uh, late game especially because nades are super important if it's round four or zone five even. Uh, it's a very small area. Nades are going to be more important and more impactful at the end of that. So definitely... Contest, nade, and if you have a knock on somebody, start throwing nades like crazy because you want to make sure that that team goes down. Uh, next thing you know, if a team gets rezzed or something, you want to always go back, but sometimes there is that chance if you don't have a nade, you can get really screwed there. Uh, and the final topic for this video is don't stress out. If you're in this game and if you want to rank up, you know, it's not the end of the world if you don't. Everyone's going to lose RP. It doesn't matter who you are. You're not ASU. You're not anybody in particular. But this this is really important topic. Like, honestly, it seems so basic, but I see so many Twitch streamers and YouTube content creators stressing out over their rank. It really doesn't matter. You're, you're put in that position for a reason. You're there to get better. Um, I didn't start getting better until I'd say maybe season 10, and I've been playing this game for over a couple years now. I would even say I started, I mean, I, I know I started at season zero, which was before Octane came out. I remember the day he came out 
and man, it, it this game has become so different. It, it's actually insane to me. But yeah, that's really about it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Um, again, if you found any of these tips helpful, a like uh, would be nice. You know, you don't have to. Comment what you guys think I could have done better or what I could have said differently. And yeah, you guys have a wonderful day now. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace, everybody, and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.